Locate the air filter housing. Turn the wheel to give yourself better access to the lining. Remove the Torx bolts that help secure the wheel well lining to the vehicle. The wheel well lining can be pretty rigid and sometimes sharp, so it's a good idea to have a pair of gloves before attempting this repair. Disconnect the bulb assembly. Press the tab and pull the connector to remove it. Disconnect the sensor. What you want to do is kind of just flip this tab a little bit and then you can kind of pull this connector off once you get this tab kind of flipped up. Remove the Torx bolt by turning it counterclockwise. Turn the wheel to give yourself better access to the lining. Remove the Torx bolts that help secure the wheel well lining to the vehicle. Pull away the wheel well lining. Disconnect the bulb assembly. Push the tab and pull the connector to remove it. Disconnect the sensor. And what you want to do is kind of just flip this tab a little bit and then you can kind of pull this connector off once you get this tab kind of flipped up. Pull the hose off to remove it. And the only one you really need to disconnect is this one that's running to it and there's a little tab right on the side. And what you do is just push that and pull that off like that and it's going to be disconnected. Now you're able to pull that off because the rest of the stuff there is actually all just attached to the bumper. Remove the Torx bolt by turning it counterclockwise. Disengage the fasteners to remove the panel. Now in order to do this, you want to start from the front of the vehicle. The tabs in the back are kind of in there in a manner that you don't want to pry from the back. But you just want to start on one side here and kind of lift up on the front as we do this, just like that. Pry up the front. There we go, popping off. Remove the Torx bolts by turning them counterclockwise. Remove the Torx bolts by turning them counterclockwise. There are nine bolts that need to be removed. A creeper makes moving around under your vehicle a lot easier. Lift up the lining in the trunk to gain access to the jack kit. This is the tool kit that we need to take off the lights. You're going to pull it out, open it up. This is the tool that you want to change your lights. Take the bulb housing out of the vehicle. Unlock the bulb housing by twisting the locking pin counterclockwise. Try to pull in a controlled manner when removing the housing from the vehicle. Disconnect the housing. You just get a screwdriver in kind of the top part here, pop that up, and then kind of pivot it off like that. This one right here, there's a little tab, like kind of down on the side. So what you do is it's kind of underneath this section right here. Just push it and then pull this off. Um, if you need to use a screwdriver to help, um, it can help a little bit. Take the bulb housing out of the vehicle. Unlock the bulb housing by twisting the locking pin clockwise. Try to pull in a controlled manner when removing the housing from the vehicle. Disconnect the housing. You just get a screwdriver in kind of the top part here, pop that up, and then kind of pivot it off like that. Push the tab to disconnect the housing. Now we have these metal clips that actually hold the bumper on on the top, and they're basically located right underneath this section here. There's one there, and then there's one there, okay? 
And what you got to do is right here, you got to push right there on this side towards the middle of the engine. You can also come kind of over the top and kind of just pry it and slide it over and out like that. Make sure you don't drop that. Remove the remaining clips. Remove the bumper. So I would start on one side, kind of just grab it within the wheel well, pull it. We can see it kind of popped off there on this side. We'll kind of do the same thing over on this side. This is kind of the easiest way to do it, is kind of get it on both sides here. Locate the air filter housing. Remove the screws that secure the air filter assembly. Just push down on this, and then basically we have to remove these sections on the side here. <clears throat> Just pull them off like that. Disconnect the sensor. Push the tab and pull the connector to remove it. Remove the air filter. Insert the new air filter into the assembly. Make sure that the edges of the filter are flush with the assembly. What we want to do is make sure these little sections over here can kind of come off and all they do is kind of just pop in there. So make sure that both of those are in there um, before putting this back in. And what we're going to do is we're going to put one side in first here like this. Pop it in there and then we'll just kind of pull the other side pop that in there and kind of get it into place here. Reconnect the sensor. Never operate your vehicle without an air filter. And then what we want to do is just kind of get this back into place and you will have to kind of push up a little bit on it, kind of push up and then go ahead and start tightening up these screws. Attach the screws to secure the housing. Replace the screws that secure the housing by turning them clockwise. Make sure the assembly is tight and secure. Now the last step we want to do, as you can see, like this section here kind of came off. So we do want to make sure that this is kind of back on there um, before going ahead and putting the bumper back on. We want to make sure that this section is back on there like that. When we go to put this back on, we want to make sure that the bottom of the bumper is kind of on the outside as well as the top of the bumper. So what I suggest is kind of putting it in here like this, kind of on the bottom, and then bringing the top part up and kind of into place here. Um, it will kind of help. It will kind of help if you don't, if, if you have another person to kind of help you on the bottom, that may help. So we can get the side kind of up into place here. We can get the side up into place here. And now what we can kind of do is come over. And again, we got the tabs right here. So what we're gonna do is kind of line those up. We wanna push that one into place, as well as kind of get this over here into place by kind of pushing it back in. Okay, so that kind of slides in there. We'll make sure that this is kind of in there. The best bet is to put the sides in first. Make sure that the sides are sliding in here um, like that first, okay? And then you can kind of line up the rest of this, pull this up, get these other tabs in here. And now at this point, everything should be kind of flush. If it's not, it's not really seated properly. You just kind of come over make sure you kind of get it. Um, if you're having problems, it could be the underneath part. Now, as I can see over here, um, the underneath section is kind of going on the wrong side. So that's what's preventing it from going in. So I'm just going to tuck that in underneath. And now this should sit in there pretty nice and easy. We can see it's all in there. Replace the clips. So we're going to put this clip on and what you want to do is start from the inside of the car like this and this clip is just going to slide on. Now you can either push it 
or it does have this little ring right here you might need to use a screwdriver or something it does go on there pretty tight so if you want to get something hard to push on the other side it just goes on kind of like that replace the remaining clips Replace the Torx bolts by turning them clockwise. And now when we put this cover back on, what you got to do is, if you notice, there's some tabs right here in the back. One of them is actually broken off. This is why we got to be very careful with this. You got to slide those tabs underneath the ridge right here first. So you want to kind of get this in here like that and then make sure that those are going uh, underneath the ridge so that we push it kind of back. And from there, all these other ones in the front should line up so we can just kind of go around in the front, push down, we'll feel them kind of click in there. Make sure the assembly is tight and secure. Replace the Torx bolts by turning them clockwise. Safety glasses are a must when working under your vehicle. There is a significant amount of debris that collects and falls into your face as soon as you start removing the fasteners. Make sure the assembly is tight and secure. First thing we want to do is make sure that the bar is forward. You want to make sure that the bar, this bar, is down like that. So that this is down and this is kind of pointing forward. Reinsert the bulb housing into the vehicle. Reconnect the bulb housing. This one just gets pushed on there as well. It really, you, if you're not, if you're having trouble putting it on, um, you might have to kind of turn it because this little black tab will get in the way. And then this is just going to slide in. Basically, get it in as far as you can, like so. Engage the fastener by giving it a quarter turn. Turn this counterclockwise to replace it. Make sure the bulb housing is secure. Again, make sure that this is forward. Reinsert the bulb housing into the vehicle. Reconnect the housing. one we just want to make sure we push it on and make sure you push this all the way on until it clicks otherwise the housing isn't going to work for you. Engage the fastener by giving it a quarter turn. Turn this clockwise to replace it. Make sure the bulb housing is secure. Replace the Torx bolt by turning it clockwise. Reconnect the connector. Reconnect the bulb assembly. Replace the wheel well lining. Replace the Torx bolts by turning them clockwise. Make sure the assembly is tight and secure. Replace the Torx bolt by turning it clockwise. Reconnect the connector. Reconnect the bulb assembly. And then putting it back on, all we got to do is put the hose on and then just push it on into place and it should kind of click. Replace the wheel well lining. Replace the Torx bolts by turning them clockwise. Make sure the assembly is tight and secure.